Hello, and welcome to another episode of Making Sense of Social Media Podcast. My name is Lori Clausen. I'm excited about today's episode. I'm going to be chatting with a digital marketing agency owner down in California, and he's got so many great bits of information that I can't wait to share with you. Welcome, Rupert. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Lori, thank you so much. Really appreciate being here. Um, so my name is Rupert Reinecke. I am originally from South Africa. I do have uh, a little residual of an accent, kind of comes and goes, depending on the day of the week. Um, <laughs> I am a digital innovation strategist, um, which basically Ooh. means I guide businesses in transforming their digital presence. I leverage and use design thinking, UX, UI, and various insights to develop strategies that captivate and engage audiences and deliver results. Um, my company is Redstone Studios. Uh, we help ambitious brands cut through the clutter of digital marketing and find clarity and accelerate growth. Marketing is forever changed due to like AI and all the things that are constantly coming up. So I think part of the reason why I started this podcast was to help small business owners and those that are having to do it on their own or those who maybe don't have a whole lot of resources and know where to turn just to help them maybe not be so afraid of what marketing is today and what, what it all means. So let's just get right into the questions because I'm really excited to hear what your, your expertise and answers will be for our listeners and watchers today. So Rupert, in your um, opinion and in your experience, what are the main goals of creating and distributing social media content to the different platforms? I love that question, Lori. Um, you know, I hate to be cliche in, uh, you know, the answer, but, you know, it really does depend. <laughs> and I think uh, <laughs> all of that is very much dependent on what are the goals of the organization, the business, right. and, you know, that we're working with. Um, when in doubt, a lot of the times I always defer to frameworks, you know, frameworks are definitely great tools, uh, that can help when making decisions. And I think for me, you know, one of the frameworks that we constantly use, um, whenever we're engaging with any of our clients is the customer value journey. And so okay. for a lot of folks that aren't familiar with that, it's basically how we create value for our customers online. And if you want to think of kind of like an upside down pyramid where we've got a couple of different categories that we uh, upside down pull. pyramid, yeah, upside down pyramid. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm a very tunnel. visual person. I had to figure that one out. <laughs> got to be, the visuals are always helpful, so we yeah. <laughs> you know like to always focus on uh, you know awareness and reach, you know, which is uh, you know the top of the funnel or tofu. <laughs> Um, sometimes, you know, at the middle of the funnel, it's really about, uh, you know, what are some strategies or some tools that we can focus on for right. uh, really nurturing, educating our audience, our customers. And then, uh, you know, when they're ready to take action, we kind of get them to the bottom of the funnel, which is really on, um, you know, building um, loyal raving fans, conversion, um, and then just, you know, keeping folks uh, retained and referring people, uh, you know, back to the business again. So I think that's really one of the big goals is, um, you know, helping create that brand awareness. Of course, you know, a lot of businesses are like, it's all about the traffic and like, yes, you know, we need, we need to drive traffic in order to, uh, you know, take folks through this funnel. Um, but, you know, one thing that I think, um, really stands out to me today is how can we better humanize the brand? So you know, in, in an AI economy, how do we stand out when we're oversaturated with uh, so much content that comes out there? And I right. think it's really where, you know, the humanity, our human aspect, you know, different ways that can really personalize the connection, really just demonstrate an authenticity um, with customers online is uh, one way that we can really stand out and um, create an engaging and, uh, you know, effective social media. So standing out in my experience and in my opinion is, you know, like you said, humanizing the brand, that means you're the face of your brand. What would you say to the small business owner who is terrified of the camera, terrified to get, get on a video or, or whatever, like how would you encourage them or what kind of advice would you give to them? 
Well, I think uh, the very first thing is you're not alone. You're not the first business owner to, uh, you know, be incredibly intimidated by the camera. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, a really good piece of advice is the first one's always the worst. So, uh, you know, just get in front of the camera, make mistakes, <laughs> get used to it. Um, and, and I don't want to make it sound cavalier <laughs> where I'm like, just do it. But yeah. it's, it's really one of the things we get better at, um, the things that we practice repetition on. So, you know, just right. like when you've got the goal of going to the gym, you want to work out. You know, the first step is, you know, get through that door, turn it on, you know, um, figure out, you know, how do you want to look online? What did you like? What did you not like? <laughs> yeah. Did it make you uncomfortable? Did it scare you? Um, and I think all of those things are really good because that's that's really how we get comfortable with being online. Um, but most importantly, being authentic is uh, yes. you know, repetition and the practice of doing it. I love referring back to my very first video online it's at least 10 years old, probably more <laughs> like 15. And it's so awful. <laughs> it's just literally me going, hi, my name is Lori. And then I talk about the fact that I love sushi and I live in Canada and I have two daughters. Like that's it. It, it And then like, bye. <laughs> it's horrible. <laughs> but yeah, so <clears throat> practice makes better that's for sure i'm not going to say perfect because nothing's ever perfect but done is the new perfect as long as it's done yes. published voila we've Ooh. got a success <laughs> i love that done is the new perfect i'm going to put a caption right there awesome so how do you measure when something is actually effective or if something has become effective from your social media content and are there tools that you maybe use to measure that effectiveness or anything like that it's a really good question. I think um, so many businesses uh, that we work with, you know, really can, th this is a rabbit hole. A lot of people can get lost in it. You know, there's uh, always this, uh, you know, buzzword that goes around vanity metrics. Mm -hmm. Like how many likes do we have? How many, uh, you know, followers, what are we doing? And I think it really just comes back to, again, um, if you know your customer really well, you kind of understand what their pain points are, you know, what they're looking to really do, you know, what are their hopes, their dreams, their goals, their ambitions. Um, how does your business come into play with that? Um, so when we're thinking about that through that lens, we're really going to leverage, it's like, what are the tools, what are the metrics, you know, that make the most sense to kind of build brand awareness, you know, top of funnel again. You know, if we're looking to um, convert, you know, folks through sales, you know, again, we're going through the bottom of the funnel. But I think three metrics that we kind of actively keep an eye on um, is, you know, what are the engagement uh, rates that we're looking at? So um, how many comments, how many shares, how many interactions? Uh, why do we measure this? Why does it matter? Well, this can be a really good indicator as to what's working well and what's not. So I think... Um, it's kind of like, you know, one of those temperature checks where we got to try something new. Is it going to work? We don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Put it in front of our audience and figure it out. So I think, uh, you know, engagement is definitely one of those uh, metrics to help with that. And then the second thing um, that I think would really be helpful is, um, you know, what's the reach? You know, how many unique mm. people, um, potential customers have actually seen the content? So I think uh, that can really kind of educate us as, you know, do we have the right eyeballs? You know, that's reading or viewing or consuming the media that we put out there. Right. Uh, and then the same thing with impressions. How often is the content being shown? Where is it being shown? You know, both reach and impression can, you know, definitely help um, be a good benchmark, you know, to understand awareness and growth. And then the last one that I think is really good is going to be conversion. So, you know, what is the conversion yeah. rate? Yeah. And this one can get a little complicated because it's like, you know, what are the actions that we want to do? You know, sometimes right. it's, it's a click on a website. Maybe it's a download of, uh, you know, a free tool, a resource, you know, getting into your newsletter. Um, but I think ultimately business owners want to know. It's like, hey, I'm, I'm spending money on traffic. I'm spending money and time <laughs> building yeah. this content. Is it working? What's the ROI, the return on the investment? Um, are people actually moving through this funnel? You know, have they developed, you know, kind of like this greater awareness, this affinity for the brand? 
So I'd say, um, you know, when in doubt, start with those metrics, see what the results are, and then, uh, you know, kind of pivot and see, uh, you know, what key metrics and tools can really um, help with effectiveness. Um, answering the second part of the question, what tools do we use? Um, always a fan of Google Analytics, you know, it can get a um, little bit complicated. Uh, we do integrate um, a lot of tools. So we use Sprout Social. We also use Hey Orca. You know, those are some social media management um, platforms. They can be a little pricey. So I'm just putting it out mm. there. It's yeah. not required that you use these platforms. You can still run right you know, very effective social media campaigns without, you know, buying any of the fancy tools. Um, as long as you have something that can at least give you um, a little bit of an indicator as to what are we, what are we me measuring? What are we managing? Is it working? And right. you know, can we do this consistently month to month as we're pulling the data and the metrics? That's such great advice, Rupert. And I think something that kind of tweaked uh, thought while you were talking was, you know, we can't really measure anything unless we actually tell people or ask people to do something, right? And I, in my experience as a marketing coach, I found that more often than not, so many people forget to put those calls to action inside of their content and even Absolutely. their emails and everything. Like, it's just, I don't know how to say it more plainly like we have to tell as marketers we have to tell people what to do I mean marketing of the 1930s 40s 50s it was all billboard marketing like buy my stuff because I said so and that doesn't necessarily work as well these days but you know when you put your face in front of the camera and you know show that authenticity and and approach or address the pain points like you were speaking of earlier and then provide that call to action like it it sounds like it is really quite simple and and i think a lot of people actually forget that it can be not that difficult absolutely i think uh, you know keeping it simple you know perhaps uh, <laughs> is one of the hardest thing especially when uh, we can yeah. shadow as business owners right yeah yeah um, so, you know, really cutting through the clutter, you know, just, you know, reminding ourselves, why do you exist? You know, yeah. you don't exist to make profit. You really exist to serve your customers. You know, mm -hmm. what are their hopes, their goals, their dreams, their ambitions? Um, it makes it a lot easier then to kind of understand. It's like, oh, you know, this this particular customer needs, you know, some advice. Maybe they need, uh, you know, a educational post, you know, like a moment yeah. of micro learning as they're scrolling, just to kind of remind them um, how to get back on track. So I think um, yeah. it's really helpful, you know, when we use, again, those um, lenses to look through, you know, keeping it about the customer at all times. I think on the, uh, you know, every business owner has hard days. And I think if we take the time and make the effort to bring it back around to yeah, like, why are we doing this? And who are we serving? That's just so important. This is a really great segue into what are some of the best practice tips that you might suggest for getting that or creating that engaging content? Yeah, that's, that's an excellent question. I think, um, you know, my background is design thinking. So I always like to, uh, you know, I'm a little bit of a geek. <laughs> I love research. Geeks rule. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so it's all about the numbers. It's about you yeah. know, the qualitative, the quantitative. Um, and why does it really matter? I think for me, it comes down to how well do I know my audience? How well do I know my mm. customer? Um, I love putting together customer personas. So, you know, as mm. I'm thinking about, you know, what's the unique business problem that's out there? And how does my organization or how does the business that we're consulting with, how does their organization um, very clearly meet their customers' needs? Um, where do their customers hang out? What are they interested in? Um, yeah. What are their demographics? What are they talking about? <laughs> right. Um, it's very good when we know the exact top three, top five pain points, you know, the stuff that keeps them up at night. Um, and again, it's like, you know, what are the pain relievers? You know, how does that business, you know, provide the solutions to any of their, their wants, their hopes, right. their desires, their dreams? And so I think uh, that intimacy is really what the audience is looking for. 
you know, so when yeah. we're thinking about social media, it is all about connection. So the more that we know how to connect, um, what the right lingo is so that the customer, you know, definitely feels like, oh, oh my gosh, I feel like you're in my head. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's that moment where you're like, we know our audience and we can better serve them. So I think um, that's, that's probably the first thing that I would, uh, you know, suggest when I'm thinking about that. Um, some other things that come to mind, um, I think it's always good to be intent, intentful, you know, when um, right. creating content, why are you doing it? What's the purpose behind this particular, you know, piece of content? Um, having that clarity, um, really, again, you know, shifting it to, you know, making it about the customer. Um, and this is where, you know, any real world tips, stories, advice um, to help solve their problem, you know, can really come into, uh, you know, play over there. And I think, um, like I mentioned earlier, it's it's really about trying a lot of different things. Um, experimentation is good in this field. Yes. Uh, because it's like, you know, if you ask anybody, it's like, what was the top social media feed that you saw five days ago? You know, I, I can barely <laughs> remember. It's like, you know, when I open up LinkedIn or Instagram or any of the other feeds, I'm like, I don't remember the one that I looked at four hours ago. <laughs> Exactly. But I think uh, there's a lot of comfort in that sense, you know, that it's okay to experiment. It's okay to um, try new things out. You know, if you've got some material where you're kind of like, this looks really fun. How is this going to work? You know, always be authentic with it. You know, don't yes. kind of, you know, if, if you're not comfortable doing something and you wouldn't do that authentically, don't do it just because, you know, some influencer has been doing it online. But, you know, do take the risks. Be bold. Be brave. Um trying new things out. That brings to mind a saying that kind of just happened. This was a long time ago at the beginning of my career when I was doing a little bit more uh, public speaking and and I just was up there talking and I, I just blurted out, you know, go ahead and push buttons. You're not going to break anything. Like just try, just experiment. So yeah, it's really just so important to to do that with, uh, like you said, authenticity and intentionality. Like that's that's huge. All right, so that leads into the next really big, very debatable question, or not debatable, but it's a a, a topic that is highly debated, and that is the quality versus quantity debate that surrounds content marketing on social media. We have influencers out here that are saying you should be posting like 50 times a day. And we have other people out here going, you know, and I'm more in this camp saying post in a way that you're not going to burn out, but that you can be consistent. Right. So what's your opinion and take on that? I love this question. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good one, isn't it? <laughs> I think uh, there's so many business owners where it's like, we've got to post at this time and it's got to be on these channels. And it's like, there's, there's no gotta with any of this, you know, we just mm. need to be consistent. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, with the debate, you know, quality versus quantity, it's like hands down quantity is always going to, you know, be, you know, the uh, driver when it comes to social media, people connect with, uh, you know, folks that they like, that they trust and that they resonate with, you know, they want to do business with them because, you know, they're, they're kind of plucking those authenticity strings. You know, they, they're loving the yeah. stories that they're sharing. They're kind of like, you know, this is, this is my tribe. These are my people. Yeah. Um, so I think really just focusing on what is a quality connection? You know, anybody can connect online. <laughs> yes. What does a quality connection really look like? Um, I'd rather see less posts, you know, and whatever that frequency looks like is really going to be up to, you know, the business and the organization. Mm -hmm. um, but the quality is really going to um, help solidify your brand um, trust. And, uh, you know, it's also going to, you know, keep folks coming back for more because you're, yeah. you're speaking to the right audience. So as long as you're always being authentic, you're focusing on really understanding what those real world problems are. Um, you're sharing real stories, you know, real anecdotes that can actually help people that they can apply. So, you know, I'm always a big fan of, um, you know, just, just give it away for free. You know, if, mm. if you've got some folks where it's like, hey, I, I, I need some help in this. Sure. Here's the plan. If, if you're having a hard time implementing it, cool. We'll, we'll help you implement it. But here's a blueprint. Here's everything that you need. Run with it. 
Yeah. So, you know, just being that guide in that process, I think, is really valuable for a lot of people. Uh, going back to managing, <laughs> I guess you could mm. say quality quant, right? You know, we want to try, try to find that balance. There are some really good strategies that we can um, kind of leverage, you know, to generate some more content. So okay. when you produce really high quality content, you know, you've got a podcast, maybe you've got some videos, maybe you've got some interviews, you can repurpose a lot of that. You can take snippets of videos, you know, kind of um, have a different way of showcasing that, you know, put those into reels, put those into stories. Um, there's lots of different ways to leverage high quality content to kind of extend you know, the shelf life of it. So if you're concerned where it's like, oh, we've only got, you know, a handful of these really great quality posts. Awesome. How else could we extend, you know, the use of that? Mm -hmm. um, we had a client recently that kind of went viral on um, one of their blog posts right around the holiday times. And uh, oh, know, cool! all the way up um, into the discover section of Google. And we're like, oh my gosh, what happened over here? Wow. We, we dove into the analytics and one of the things that we found is, um, you know, he had repurposed, you know, some of the content that had really performed well. It also was a good timing strategy, you know, right around the holidays, you know, where people were digging yeah. in. Um, but I think when you're taking high quality content, maybe add in, you know, a new perspective to it, you know, new references, maybe there's uh, an insight. It's definitely going to save on the entire creation. So um, mm -hmm. using that mindset where it's like, how far can we extend a lot of this content is also good. Yeah. Um, and the same thing where, let's say if you post it on Twitter, you got a little tweet over there, you've got some engagement, maybe it's a good quote, you know, could you throw a graphic in the background, bring it into LinkedIn, you know, with something yeah. like that. So I mean, there's lots of different, you know, small hacks, tips, tools, you know, just to kind of, help balance you know that quantity because you know a lot of folks out there it's like you know past eight hours is it relevant so i was like i don't know oh. you're... <laughs> right you know everybody's got their opinion i think yeah that that's maybe true it comes down to you know what, what is your audience doing how are we seeing them engage you know what's working what can we really leverage there i have one more question for you today rupert and i can't wait to hear what you have to say about this and how do you leverage the power of storytelling and emotion in your social media content i love this one storytelling every business has a story um, yeah when you start asking the business it's like so tell me about your story why do you exist if if your business closed doors tomorrow, what what gap in the world would you leave, right? Ooh, that's a, oh, I like that. <laughs> a lot of folks, especially business owners, sometimes they grossly undervalue how much they are making a huge impact in the lives of their customers and the people that they serve. Yeah. So sometimes you, you need somebody else to, you know, kind of, see what's behind you, you know, um, pull out that story. You know, how are you going to really leverage, you know, the facts, the things that are real, um, those authentic experiences to really put it into a way that's going to hit with your audience. Um, one of the things that I love with this is when you've got user driven content mm. uh, and that can be like a client testimonial, a story, you know, something that another person wrote about the business online. So sometimes we, as business owners, don't always see the value, but, you know, when it comes through somebody else's um, experience, because they're on the other side of the curtain, right? We really have the opportunity to see how impactful that is to another person. So I think, um, first and foremost, it's it's understanding, you know, why you exist, you know, what, um, you know, key services and value that you're providing for your customers and then figuring out exactly how to do it, right? You can't bring up the word story, right, without Don Miller. So I'm a big advocate yeah. of Don Miller's story brand. Um, I can't wait for his new book. Are you getting it? Of course, you know, Yay, I'm, I'm like too. everybody else, I'm like, the first one was good. I can't wait to see what's in the, you know, the up and coming version, right? Yeah, I know, I'm so excited. So if anybody's not, you know, familiar with um, Don Miller's story brand, it's basically, again, another tool, another framework, huge fan mm. of frameworks, goes through about seven different phases, right? 
and your business is not the the main character <laughs> you're not the hero yeah the customers are the heroes you know on that journey um and the main thing is you know we, we start with the character they've got a problem they're going to meet a guide you know somebody that's trusted you know you as the business owner you're going to give them a plan you're going to help them take action and ultimately you're going to help them avoid failure and at the end of the line mm. you're going to have this incredible success and voila you know we're leveraging the power of story storytelling and i think it's it's just a reminder to a lot of businesses you know it's it's all about the customer it's it's very tempting sometimes businesses are like oh yeah we need social media we need all this content to drive you know profits we need to focus on conversions but there's a quote that I absolutely love, and I do have this pinned on my computer, so I'm just going to pull it up. Um, but Peter Drucker, um, mm -hmm. you know, basically had this one quote. It's like, businesses exist because of its customers. Um, mm -hmm. Business enterprisers are organs of societies. They don't exist for their own sake. They exist to fulfill very specific social purposes and to satisfy the specific need of society, community, or individuals, end quote. And I think, you know, for me, it's always a reminder if we're doing a really good job with our customers, if we're really solving their problems, if we're telling the right stories, if we've got that customer journey dialed in, we're really making it engaging at each of those different phases. Um, and we're having fun with it. You know, we're being authentic. Yeah. Real. The natural byproduct is profit, right? Yeah. I mean, yes. That's, that's kind of why we exist. We, we serve specific problems that exist within the marketplace. And our customers become raving fans and they can't wait to go, you know, spread the word to everybody else because yeah. we're helping them ultimately um, get rid of the pains that they're experiencing and, uh, you know, um, help them fulfill their hopes, dreams and their goals. You've just inspired me. I've been, a, I'm a seasoned pro, like I've been at this for 13 years and just the way you've explained everything just makes it sound so doable for really any type of business owner or anyone doing social media marketing for themselves or the company they work for perhaps, or I just, I love the way that you've phrased and, and encapsulated everything into like this, this is possible. And yeah, I just love it. You're, you've been so inspiring today, Rupert. Thank you so much. Well, thank you so much, Lori. I really appreciate the opportunity to uh, have a little chat and, uh, you know, yeah. see how help some folks, uh, you know, improve their social media. Well, along those lines, please tell everybody how they can, where they can find you, maybe how they can get a hold of you. Absolutely. So I camp out on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is kind of my social network of choice. So Rupert yeah. Renica on LinkedIn. Um, and then my business name is Redstone Studio. No S at the end. So redstonestudio.com. So if you have any questions, happy to keep the conversation rolling. And again, what an absolute delight, Lori. I'm so <laughs> thrilled that you're providing so much value to a lot of businesses that absolutely need clarity to cut through a lot of the online clutter. Yeah. And that's the whole purpose and intention behind this podcast. So thank you so much for that. Um, what a delight, everybody. If you need to connect or want to connect with Rupert, please do that. All the in links and information will be in the description box below. Thank you so much, Rupert. Thank you, Lori. Thank you so much for watching today's episode of Making Sense of Social Media. When it's your turn to make sense of social media for your own business, I offer one-on-one -on -one marketing coaching as well as group coaching. So go ahead and click the links that are here in the description box of this podcast episode. I would love to connect with you and hopefully become your marketing mentor. Thanks for watching.